Good afternoon. The uh, Lane Care Transitions Collaborative was one of several teams that were organized around the state in an effort to bring together the entire care continuum and whole communities to collaborate uh, around improving transitions of care. And it really had uh, two different types of objectives. It was both to come up with specific interventions, but also it had a meta goal, uh, which is to put people together uh, around the same table and learn to play together and to, and to learn about each other and, uh, and what common strategies could we uh, come together around. It was supported uh, through CMS funding and uh, the Oregon De Department of Human Services with tremendous facilitation from Linda Dreyer uh, at DHS and continues to help us through, through the process. Um, being Eugene, uh, we had a very engaged community, and when we first got together several months ago, we had, I think, 25 people came around the table, and it was representative of nursing facilities, of home health agencies, hospitals, uh, primary care, geriatrics, and so forth. Very, very engaged, and I'm pleased that several of the members of our team are actually in the room uh, this afternoon, but it was very gratifying from the get-go to know there was such a level of interest in our community and finding ways to work together more closely. Uh, the model was to really empower us as a community to decide where we wanted to put our energies and where to start. Uh, that in of itself was a challenge uh, because it was a big black box that we had to uh, to work with then. But we did start out with agreement about evidence-based best practices. We reviewed some of the uh, most commonly known strategies out there in you know, Project Boost, Project Red, Care Transitions Intervention, and so forth. But it was very hard for a community to come out uh, with what is always really a bundle of interventions. There's no silver bullet. We wouldn't be here today if there was a silver bullet. Um, it, it really is a bundle of interventions, but it's very hard for a community to come together and at the same time launch a bundle of interventions that are, are gonna be uh, workable and sustainable. So we were encouraged to think small PDSA cycles and so forth, you know, best practices and quality improvement, and we, um, uh, we decided to uh, pick a, po a population of COPD patients and to take one of the pieces of uh, care transitions best practices. Uh, and so where to start? Well, we looked at all kinds of things. We even looked at palliative care was really high on the radar screen for a lot of the team. We looked at teach back and post-discharge follow-up and so forth. Where we landed, I was very pleased about this actually, uh, where we landed uh, was actually more of a person-focused approach, and we wanted to standardize um, the ability to empower our patients as best as possible, so we took one of the components of the, the care transitions intervention, the personal health record, and try to see if we could standardize both a tool and a process to apply across all those care settings, primary care, hospital, and so forth. Um, gee, if we only would, I just learned today I could have called Stephanie six months ago and found out <laughs> about, about the PHRs used uh, up here in Portland. But um, it was a great process to come together and, um, and look at uh, what would work for our community. Uh, we specifically liked the personal health record that um, uh, the folks in Colorado had come up with for the care transitions intervention because for one thing it was, it was simple. Uh, it was tested already with patients, and it was uh, it was cheap. Uh, it was very inexpensive. Uh, you know, there's a ton of models out there. We actually looked very had a big debate about e personal health records because uh, there's so many new and a growing plethora of online tools right now, uh, it, and they're very appealing, uh, but it was the strong consensus of our group that to apply something across all settings, and particularly the more frail and vulnerable population, uh, it was not at this point uh, realistic for us to move forward with a common um, e-personal health record. So uh, we took the tool that was developed by the Coleman team and we modified it to be a bit more applicable across care settings. Uh, we tested it. Uh, I have a visual aid. I, I forgot to bring it up with me. It's at the table. But um, uh, we tested it uh, both in clinic settings 
uh, in nursing facilities. We tested it uh, in the hospital. Uh, we tested it by sitting down and going over with patients one-on-one -on -one and using it. We tested it within a health plan um, within our OHP uh, managed care plan and mailing it out and then calling patients to get feedback on it. And we learned a whole lot from that. Uh, and I can go into more detail later about what we learned. But, uh, but the bottom line is we learned to play together. And uh, uh, now with the support of uh, Quality Corporation uh, that has agreed to host this tool, uh, it's now available in a common place that so we can all, to use it, we can all go to the Quality Corp website, we can download it, it's a paper tool, it can be printed out, uh, with it is a standardized uh, instruction sheet and also a cover letter that any organization that chooses to use it can put their logo on the cover letter. The tool itself is standardized so it can't be modified, but the cover letter can be tailored to the organization that wants to use it uh, and then kind of own it in that way. Uh, so that's where we are. Excellent. Thank you, Dan. I think I'll return to Nora here at the, this end of the table and, and ask you, Nora, tell us a little bit about what you have found to be in your project the biggest, the biggest challenge. And, and I guess I'd, I would also say that has that led to an opportunity, that challenge? Um, so I think just a couple of things. I think that how, to, how I answer that question depends on where we were in the timeline. So it's absolutely okay. evolved. Um, I think early on, really identifying who were the appropriate and key stakeholders, who did we really need to engage at an administrative level to gain support, how are we really going to define our goals. Uh, one thing I've been asked to advise at an OHSU hospital-wide level, transitional care improvements, and I think really defining um, in some ways defining what a transitional care program will look like from across the hospital but then within different populations so that definition piece I think can be quite challenging um, and really defining who are key partners early on was a big challenge and then as we move forward and we're really in the um, moved past the program development phase and into implementation the challenges really shifted and so for the patient population that we're working with there's really vast needs and so being able to really identify what are the key and core elements for our transitional care intervention and how can we reliably do that for each patient without uh, perhaps you know going down every rabbit hole to try to meet every specific need but what are going to be our core intervention what's our core intervention and how can we how can we deliver that so we uh, we also found that really relying on checklists as a key way to to do that was very very helpful